Hi, everybody. This is Cheryl Kemp, and I am coming tonight to share from Psalms 117. I will be reading it in the King James Version and also in the Living Bible. You got to really pay attention because if not, it might be over. <laughs> Psalms 117, oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. I want to read it again now in the Living Bible. Praise the Lord, all nations everywhere. Praise him, all the peoples of the earth, for he loves us very dearly, and his truth endures. Praise the Lord. This portion of scripture is like a global invitation with a grand explanation. It's inviting everyone from everywhere to give praise, and I'll add at all times. <laughs> and then it also gives two reasons why. Because the merciful kindness of God, of our Lord, is so great, and his truth endures forever. So we are encouraged. We are um, pushed to praise him. And I started thinking about, you know, how our world has changed so much with COVID. Um, kids don't go to school really anymore. They're at home for the most part, as I know it to be, in our area. And people, you know, most people that had office jobs, they're working from home still. Uh, people that lost their jobs, some of them have started their own businesses. There's been some good and there's been some bad. There's been some give and some take. But the bottom line is God is still worthy to be praised. Praise is a weapon. Y'all know that, right? If you, if you didn't, now you do. And if you forgot, I'm reminding you. Praise is a weapon. And we've got to use our weapon of praise when we're feeling down, when we're feeling low, when we're on the high mountain, when we're in the low valley. Praise is always appropriate for the upright. And I just want to encourage us to make sure that we are making uh, our, our headspace, our perspective, our outlook on life correct as a Christian, that we are giving God all the praise. Even when things are going wrong, we can most times find something to give God praise for. Most recently, I had a coworker that passed away. My Retta passed away. Uh, we know Mother Ship passed away. We had a friend from back home, um, Mother Perry, she passed away. This is just like in the last week. But when I started thinking about it, I was like, but yet we had these wonderful people in our lives. That's the reason to give God praise. Yes, it's sad that they're no longer in this earth, but I give God praise that they're in a better place. None of them are suffering from the various uh, diseases and issues uh, that they had physically. So it's like, as a Christian, even in the sad times, we can give God praise. Even when our hearts are broken, we can give God praise. And then when you start thinking about his truth that endures, it endures forever, and forever is a long, 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 long time. Heaven and earth <laughs> will pass away, but his, but his word will last, and it will stand forever. This is such, I don't know, I'm just getting so happy and excited. Can you guys tell I'm trying to be calm? But I am just so excited because it doesn't matter what's happening with the pestilence because his word already told us about it. And his word always told us that we are more than conquerors and we are victorious. And the thing about being a Christian is if we die, it's still a win-win situation because heaven is our home. You see what I'm saying? It is such a wonderful blessing to know that his truth endures forever. His merciful kindness. Oh, his faithfulness. It's new every morning. He is so merciful toward us. I thank God for his faithfulness. That is great. And I just want you to be as excited as I am about giving God praise. I want you to be as excited as I am to share this global invitation with a grand explanation with someone else, because I know you're going to come across someone who might be feeling a little down. Encourage them to give God praise. Encourage them to count their blessings and name them one by one. Shall we pray? Father God, you are a great God. You are a good God. 
You are worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We do give thanks unto you, O God, because you are good. We thank you, O God, that your mercy endures forever and ever and ever. O God, we thank you for being our strength when we are weak. We thank, O God, for being our song when sometimes we just are so sad and confused. We, we feel like we don't even have a song to sing, but you place a song, a hymn in our heart. And God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that your word bubbles up in us when we need it because we have hidden it in our heart that we might not sin against you. God, I pray that you will bring joy. I pray that you will bring joy to your people, O oh God, in the midst of trying times, in the midst of challenging times. I pray that they will begin to see that you have yet provided food on the table, shoes on their feet, clothes on their back, a roof over their head. God, you have yet been good through all that we have been through, and we give you praise, glory, and honor. We most certainly lift up our pastor pit. We lift him up to you, O oh God, and the leadership, O oh God, that supports him at the Second Baptist Church. We lift up Adrian and Troy and Benjamin, the drummer boy extraordinaire. God, continue to work in that little boy's life. We thank you, O oh God, for showing yourself through all of these people that labor in ministry, O oh God, that want to be able to reach out and to help us and to support us and to lead us through times of prayer and the word. We thank you for every person, O oh God, that has been on this line, O oh God, that has been able to, to share from their personal experiences, to share, O oh God, from your word. God, we pray that you will bless them indeed and enlarge their territory. O oh God, we lift up our minister of music. He comes, O oh God, not only to present songs and hymns, O oh God, um, on Sunday services, but he also comes, O oh God, with a word and a prayer, usually on Mondays. We thank you for his uh, commitment to ministry, O oh God, and we pray, Father God, for those who are bereaved. Let them see the joy, O oh God. Let them see the joy in coming home, O oh God, and sitting at your feet and singing holy and holy and holy, holy unto you, O oh God. Yes, in the flesh we will miss our loved ones, but, O oh God, we thank you that we have a hope of glory. We have a hope of eternal life. Oh, God, change our perspective and the way that we think. Just, just turn it around, oh, God, so that our spirits will be lifted upward in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, if there's anything in our heart, our mind, our soul that's not like you, that is not uh, conforming to the way of righteousness, we pray that you will take it out, oh, God. Take it out, O oh God, and replace it with those things that are needful, O oh God, so that when we go out into the world and we interact with other people, they will know that we belong to you. They will know that, oh, you look like Jesus. God, we pray you'll change our very continents, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to represent you well and to be a tool that helps to reconcile others back to you. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for this nation. We pray for the leadership of this nation. We pray for the country, oh God. Oh God, we pray, Father, that your will will be done. We know it must be fulfilled before Jesus can return. So God, give us strength to stand. Give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Give us, oh God, to be in tune with your spirit until that great getting up morning that you call us home. Let us work the work while it is day. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you adoration. We thank you, O oh God. We give you high praise and say hallelujah to the King of kings and to the great I am. We thank you, O oh God, and we magnify you. In the name of Jesus, we give these praise and prayers to you. Amen and amen.